Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I have never planned to vlog and most importantly to vlog about war. But after the start of brutal Russian invasion to my free and beautiful country Ukraine, I have decided to record videos daily and update people on the real life situation inside Ukraine. If you support my country, if you want to witness our victory, let's do it together on my channel. So please subscribe. And today I want to discuss with you one conflict that becomes more and more visible and can have some positive consequences for Ukraine and its allies. And that is the conflict between Prihozhin, Putin and Shoigu. So first, let me introduce you briefly if you don't know these people, but Prihozhin is the head of a primate army, Wagner Group, that was known for a couple of brutal operations all over the world and joined Russia after a couple of its failures in Ukraine. They are the ones trying to control Bakhmut for months and uh, they are more or less professional. Why? Because they had trainings, they have access to foreign weapons and they are professional military people. Prihozhin has some political ambitions, but for a long period of time he was seen as one of the Putin's friends and had even a nickname of his cook. When he started fighting with his army on the territory of Ukraine, and most of his army is made of prisoners, which they take from Russian prisons because they lack people, he started quarreling with Shoigu, who is the Minister of Defense in Russia, totally Putin's uh, creature, <laughs> and um, who demonstrated lack of professionalism because lots of Putin's plans on this war failed one by one, which is good for us. Blitzkrieg, taking Kiev, getting more territories, and in general, Prihozhin was publicly shaming Shoigu for unprofessional Russian army, for lack of equipment, for corruption, for various problems that official Russian army creates to his boys, and so on and so forth. But for a long period of time, this was videos of Prihozhin saying bad things only about Shoigu. But it is believed that recently he started attacking Putin, especially after Putin's delirium on press conference with war journalists. What was the reason for that? Well, Shoigu and the Ministry of Defense edited a new order, according to which all private and volunteer armies of Russia, which Wagner Group belongs to, must sign contract with Russian Ministry of Defense and become a part of ordinary Russian army. And Prihozhin did not want to do it. Why? Because he constantly speaks that this is a way of shame, that the Russian army is totally unprofessional, and he blamed them for lots and lots of failures in Ukraine. So, of course, if he will be forced to join Russian army, that will be a huge, I don't know, problem for him, because uh, first he will be under control of Shoigu, whom he considers to be his enemy, and he will join the Russian army, which he described as totally talentless and the army of losers. So he announced that he is not going to do that. Kadyrov, another pocket uh, president of Chechnya and owner of his army, publicly signed this uh, agreement and uh, demonstrates the support to Putin and Shoigu, thus strengthening the conflict between two of these armies. What is more important and what adds oil into the fire is Putin's speech where he um, invites everyone to do to sign this contract to join uh, ordinary standard Russian army uh, so that all volunteer and private armies become the part of this standard army controlled by Shoigu and he sets the deadline the 1st of July. So we see that it is less than half a month that Prihozhin is given to join Russian army and it does not seem like he is ready to do so and it is believed that he challenged Putin and he said that it is a way of shame that he doesn't want to walk. 
Most importantly, this is not something that I've read on Ukrainian publics or social media. This is information revealed by British intelligence services. So, uh, why is it so important? Of course, orcs quarrel, they quarrel often, and that's typical behavior for Russians. But this is also a very vivid signal to Russian, once again, I don't want to use this word, Russian elite. They see that uh, some people who belong to top management of uh, Russian military, uh, part of Russian oligarchy system, which is similar to the government system, started uh, disobeying Putin. So for a long period of time, Prigozhin allowed negative comments, but they were addressed at Shoihu and other people. But finally, he started blaming Putin for failures in Ukraine. And it's very likely that as Ukrainian counteroffensive continues, there will be more and more of Russian failures, difficult to explain for the society and, of course, for those in the society, Russian society, who consider themselves elite. And that's why it is extremely important for Ukrainian soldiers, Ukrainian army, to continue liberating our territories and also supporting various Russian partisan movements to cause more and more conflicts inside Russia. Then some of you <laughs> let me in comments, give me in comments advice not to hate Russians. Honestly, I even plan to record a separate video where I will speak about hatred, whether I feel it, but this is something totally different, guys. And if some of you will advise me not to want conflicts inside Russia because like conflicts are bad, I will say, no, you're totally wrong. Because we have an extremely aggressive terrorist country and our task is to stop this country from being the way it is. If it means direct targeting, if it means uh, collapsing of Russia, that's okay. Because there is no other way to stop this war. After seeing Putin's conversations, his press conference, and millions of other of his addresses, I'm sure every sane personality understands that negotiations with Russia are impossible. They were impossible for centuries, because one thing that Russia promises, it typically does just the country. And if negotiations are not the way, the only other way is to win this war and to dictate the rules to Russia. And of course, present regime will not like these new norms of normal life. That's why any conflict that can shake their population or possibly 10% of their society is an important option for us. So let's watch attentively. Will Prigozhin sign that order and join Russian army by July the 1st? But if it will multiply on the losses of Russian army and the success of Ukrainian counteroffensive, this can lead to more open conflicts and a vivid misunderstanding inside Russian political elite. Thank you so much for your support, for your advice. Thank you for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. Introduce yourself to our beautiful merch. The link is below this video. And also, if you want, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I try to post different things there. And most importantly, thank you for being with Ukraine. Slava Ukraini!